a star-studded panel for you. I'm going to get all four folks to come up. Um, first up, Manav Garg from Eka. K. Ganesh. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you! Are we going to get cake? <laughs> and uh, Vijay Shekhar Sharma from 197? Nope. And Murugu from uh, Matrimony. Bharat Matrimony. <laughs> Alright, so what we are going to do in this session, because you guys have had a lot of chance to be able to listen to the previous sessions, is we're going to turn it around and we're going to make sure that you ask most, if not all of the questions. Okay, because I know that you've had a lot of chance to listen. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to give you a lot of chance to talk. It just means you can be a little bit more crisp about your questions, but I'll give as many people as possible a chance to ask questions. I'm going to tee it up with only one question, so I want you to think about your question. And Radhika is going to walk around with the mic and make sure that uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. Radhika will figure you out and we'll give you a chance to ask a question. You have four of the best entrepreneurs who scaled amazing companies in India and uh, have had exits. Three ex between all of them together, they're probably worth more than at least $5 billion. And if you want venture capital, they'll also give it to you. How many of you want to collect angel investment from one of those four guys up there? <laughs> all right. Let's ask questions only about that. All right. I'm going to tee up the first question. So all of you guys have had a chance to be able to scale your company beyond just the initial stages. Uh, most of you have a mic. Is there a mic available? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So let's ask about just one question I'm going to start with, uh, which most of the entrepreneurs have told me on Twitter. So if you want to follow on Twitter, you can ask these questions as well. Every time I go to an investor, they keep saying, go get me more traction. When I get 10 customers, they get me 20 customers. I go with 20 customers, they say 100 customers. Why do I need investors if they want to keep building my business without them? Vijay, do you want to start? Yeah, this, this investor doesn't want to invest in you. <laughs> That's true, actually, because for those who want to invest in you, they will not ask you to continue this carrot. So this is the hint that the gentleman can tell you. Gentleman, the word is. And uh, otherwise, the traction that you're building and this kind of chase that you are at, it, it is advantage for you. But if somebody is really seriously asking you to continue to increase traction, is the subtle hint that he's saying, please move on to someone else. Don't even follow up here. Next. Right. So I think a lot of times, I think the ecosystem in India is also very immature. I think we should just beginning to take exits. So I think they are very okay to invest in the ideas which they believe money and if entrepreneurs has a lot of success behind it. But I think, and there are certain areas where they will take more time to build value. So I don't think it's a bad thing at end of the day. You know, sometimes as a VC, as an investor, we want to see more traction because you want to see how a business is getting built. So I think people ultimately invest behind the good value. I think that's the bottom line. People don't invest in early or late stage. If you're building value, I think people will invest. You will find money for it. Murugo. Uh, yeah, so after what Vijay said, uh, sometimes you know, kind of people want to see that the traction really getting built. If they're not able to really find the idea is exciting, sometimes they want to see. Uh, in our case, a different story that uh, when you got the first round of funding, uh, you're already making a multi-million dollar. So uh, then again, uh, we were able to raise the money. We got uh, seven years of running the business from the bootstrap to $10 per month to we carried a four five million dollar entity. Then you got a first round of funding. So it depends on idea, depends on how you are able to exit the VC and uh, so it depends, no, nothing like you know, only the attraction. There are ideas got funded, just people seeing the who's behind it. But tomorrow Ganesh wants to raise money, uh -huh. that's the piece of paper, a lot of people want the queue and you know, put the money behind it. So it's a reputation, idea, many things matter not. I don't think just take one particular thing and you can generalize that. Ganesh, are you going to give us a piece of paper to the fund? <laughs> no, I think, uh, See, firstly, uh, I want you to look at it from the VC's point of view. Any negotiation, any success that you will have in the other party understanding you and doing what you want to do, you have to put yourself in your shoes. Okay, the VC is not really the big bad guy uh, with money and who makes entrepreneurs go around. Okay, right? Part of it is true. Okay, right? But not all of it is. All of it is true. See, they themselves have gone around with a begging bowl, larger begging bowl, and raised a lot of money from their LPs and investors. 
so they are exactly like you the way you are going in raising money they are doing that they have been asked all these questions okay right and asked to show traction asked to show track record asked what you were what your uh, current nav of your last fund is and all that stuff so first empathize with them see where they are coming from they are asking only for the reason that's point number 1 point number 2 is don't fall into the trap of showing traction and traction and traction and do it i have a contrary opinion than venture it's always easier to raise money on promise than on performance okay right because the moment you start giving giving <laughs> the, the moment you start giving data okay uh, it is uh, you 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 are getting into a deep hole more and more data more and more data more and more data and after 3 years i can tell you from my experience tuta vista uh, we raised 2 million dollars from sequoia capital the west bridge capital on a paper plan and saying that we will go and conquer the world we'll teach uh, us students from india very easy next okay right uh, at 4 million dollar valuation next round was a 27 million dollar valuation pre money valuation we raised 13 million more difficult finally when we sold to uh, pearson for 213 million dollars uh, the amount of due diligence among the questions i had to ask i had to answer was too much before that pearson said i was as young and as handsome as murugu with as much hair Thank you. all this hair was lost <laughs> okay right in answering actually actually told that it will not have value questions like that right what the so, 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 yeah so i think that that really that really is the thing so raise money early raise money whenever you can and if a investor keeps on asking ask him to get lost we call them fiis frequently interested investors <laughs> okay right they keep on asking you for more and more data they want an update i don't want to name the investor is one investor says kanish what's the update how are things going i said why would i tell you yeah you're not investing so why should i tell you can you guys stand up for a quick minute yeah yeah, yeah. For, please, please stand up no <laughs> yeah for, focus here huh? okay <laughs> oh, like in between done thank you thank you is it like live last So my question is to Murugu, or perhaps someone else uh, who has who has tackled the Indian payment uh, bottleneck. Uh, so Murugu, my question is, how did you how, how did you find customers paying for your site? How what what did you have to do in a unique Indian situation for them to pay you money? How did you handle it? What kind of channel is it? Do you use PayU platform? Uh, we use all kind of platform. <laughs> <laughs> So I think the business model has been that uh, if you want to look for an alliance, come to the website, register. It's a free registration, and you want to contact the prospects either through email or chat or phone number. You have to become a paid member. So there's a wall. The free membership allowed to see the information except the contact details. Only the paid membership you can. So there's a business model is that only by becoming paid you can contact. The question is about that's a business model. How do you collect money? Again, we are one of the first guys in India to go to the doorstep and collect the payment. So we are the setup across India today. Anywhere in India, within few hours, you can go to the doorstep and collect payment. Still, more than 50% of the revenue for us coming from the doorstep. Again, it's not that only online members make the payment. We have a strong telemarketing setup across India and multiple uh, regions. We are over 1,000 telecalling executives. Now that everyone, I always wonder why people looking for life partner on their own making the payment. We have to reach out to them, tell them the benefits of paid membership. educate them then convert the free into paid membership the 1000 plus telecaller we have across india they reach out to members on a certain pattern identify which customer to reach out to on what time frame convert the millions of customer who are with us into a paid customer on a regular basis either go for doorstep or online online we use various payment gateways uh, people looking at payment gateways you don't work with one payment gateway uh, we work with multiple payment gateway according to the type of card various things The idea is that how to increase that uh, the percentage of conversions. I think that itself is a separate uh, discussion point. I said that you know kind of how to increase our attempt to conversion on various payment gateway. He worked with multiple payment gateway provider accordingly, you know, so that we can get the maximum out of that attempts into conversion. I got so one question from Twitter, Murugu Ganesh. Exit. Good thing, bad thing. Why? Should I exit? Should I not exit? Is it a good? Thing? That's all the question says. So we had a strong debate with the Ganesh. Why? <laughs> And can you can you answer that? Can you go <laughs> to that first? Then Manav, yeah, yeah, we'll first Ganesh answer then. <laughs> yeah. Is exiting a good thing? No. Uh, see, there is no there is no one answer. Uh, all all businesses don't have to be built for scale, for IPO, for VC, for exit at all. There are good boutique lifestyle businesses that can be built. 
extremely profitable you can pass it on to your grandson and great grandson to inherit okay right that's perfectly fine nothing wrong that's as much of entrepreneurship even though it doesn't come in newspapers what comes in newspapers is more glamorous and sexy stuff that we all do which is go and raise money and exit and sell for 1000 crores and all of that stuff so there is no one answer both are fine depends on the business mo- depends on the business model personally i like to create large valuable businesses and when i say large value means when the value has actually been paid when when there is a market cap there is certain recognition of value that you have created that so and so is a market ca- market cap that is there even though it's on paper when you sell it to strategic uh, strategic investor or, or, or do a trade sale then there is a actual value check being cut that gives to me personally a lot of satisfaction of having monetized it also helps in terms of uh, making people wealthy not just the promoters founders the employees the investors and all of those stuff only one word of caution if you are not looking to exit that's perfectly fine but then don't go and raise money from investors because investors are there for for exit lot of it also would depend on what business model if you are talking about a power plant the fact that you will be able to create a power plant and fund it on your own is very difficult in today's world you know e-commerce business is very difficult to do it it takes more time it it takes lot more capital to be able to do it the risk is also high so not one answer depends on the business model depends a lot on what you want to do whether you want to pass it on to your great grandson or you want to you want to you want to do that or your uh, requirement for capital for the business so all of that would answer answer manav you raise money also from external investors are you going to exit no uh, i think uh, my view point is it is a personal choice i think hello yeah i think it is a matter of personal choice and of the day, you know uh, i could have exited the business you know we have more than 200 crore today we raised 40 million from silver lake very difficult to get the investors on board of of that caliber i think we had acquisition offers almost every year for past 3 years now i think it is a matter of personal choice what excites me is to you know build the next billion dollar company out of india and that's what i work for so i think it's also a lot of work if you going to stay for longer and look for an ipo or for a large exit later on so i think it purely comes down to a personal choice i think entrepreneur have all the options nothing is good or bad here i think if you are running a small business having a good life i think that's equally good as you know building a large business but moment you move towards a larger business i think there are many more partners i think you have larger investors you have larger customers you know your employees also become shareholders i think you have to manage many more expectations so therefore task become increasingly difficult as compared if you want to stay small and enjoy lifestyle and your family also has to suffer a lot because you travel a lot and you don't get fine time for children that's the perspective i have on this um no, hi this is mayur here and i'm the founder of a, a website called jingreel.com where we stream movies online to the uh, overseas audience first day per show and um, we are also focusing on the same way like what you have done at one point of time um for uh, concentrating on the indian diaspora who are based outside of india right so one the major challenge that i see at the moment is reaching out to them and then uh, exciting them to pay and watch the movies on my site which is definitely a challenge for me because of a startup and with the limited resources that i have and with the limited fund that i have i'm sure that you have gone through these challenges i i would like to have a few takeaways from you um especially from you uh, um, from the bharat matter morning uh, murugal so yeah just would like to hear sure. from you um, see marketing to the nra that indian diaspora is very easy uh, meaning like uh, it's a cost effective order, i would say that compared to targeting the indians in india because there are chanti vi channel z sony there are wider reach and a couple of medias are there print media also but again tv is the most cost effective medium want to reach out indians in us uk canada very very cost effective it's a clear to me compared to what the kind of money you spend here in fact one tv spot what you buy right you can do as good as you can spend for the entire month in the nra market reaching out is easy but again coming to whether people want to buy your product movie entertainment there's so much entertainment contents available online making people to buy it that there's something you need to figure it out because i don't know whether uh, because today the online there a lot of pirate content is there people are downloading that pirate content what would make them to buy that you know the original content paying money in order again company like netflix were able to make it successful so probably studying them would be able to analyze what made them successful uh, in terms of again selling the videos of movies and entertainment content so reaching out you can talk about in terms of business model what would make them to buy again the nris they comfortably pay through credit card so we have to bring the compelling value proposition for them to buy your content reaching out is there payment is easy the model of making them to pay 
what would make them to pay the actual conversion, conversion. yeah uh, that's something uh, you need to call yeah. two tips from uh, vijay shekhar sharma also not only nris even indians as well what are the two tips that you would give or three tips that has worked for you um i think first of all you have to uh, capture the segment which is the influencing segment the ones which are called alpha users uh, what we mistake is that uh, sometimes we start becoming more generic in our approach instead of trying to choose a segment my suggestion would be to choose the alpha user segment and these are like 2.5% of the audience which uh, simon sinek talks on the ted will help you understand what i'm talking here is that uh if you talk if you make them customer they are sort of brand ambassador for you to talk to other people now cost of reaching out in a optimum scenario is better off when you are choosing them your communication strategy can be far more uh, effective because you are fixed the variables that whom are you talking what are you going to talk second then it comes is a first mainstream which is the customer base uh, who could do it because those guys are doing it and they need a little more reassurance so lot more marketing needed here unlike the first one who could experience it because you have a great product and finally i would say that in india whatever you say how much soever that you want to build a premium product build a premium product but never expect a premium pricing so don't add to the pricing or value gap with a premium ness to it but definitely a uh, build a aspirationally premium product offer it at the same price which other would have done it ganesh you chose to actually target a lot of users who are in the us uh, out of india uh, besides seo and maybe even some search uh, marketing what else did you do any two techniques that you could name mogul just one second let me yeah. get his perspective and then i'll give it back to you yeah so um uh, in tuda vista we are focusing on i wouldn't say we are focusing on the nri market so it's a slight difference so uh, we had we have had all kinds we had disproportionate nri students because they are more particular about educa- nri parents are more particular about uh, education um, i think uh, our focus was on giving a incredible value proposition okay right that really was what the what the thing is but i mean it's not just price it's a value proposition uh, tutoring in us was 60 dollars 40 to 60 dollars per hour before we came in so instead of 40 to 60 dollars per hour for personalized tutoring we said for 100 dollars a month they could get unlimited 24 by 7 one on one tutoring so that is basically uh, we used a disruption in business model to be able to offer something that is a per hour basis to a uh, subscription basis so that changed for us uh, the game so uh, once we are able to reach it as easy we didn't use any channels we we went completely acm seo but the key thing that mugu mentioned in terms of conversion because it was an incredible value proposition the conversion was was easy there is nobody else even today nobody else competes with that nobody can give for 100 dollars a month unlimited personal mugu you have one last point yeah, i just basically want to regarding the movie thing uh, one other thing about the bollywood movies again it's shown only the major cities in the us or a lot of indians living across us they not able to see that movie one thing about with anything can tie up with the, the producers or so they can stream the movie on the same day getting release but because most of the movies the money is made in the first one weekend so probably that could something can think of okay yeah here <coughs> no no i i have one second uh, yeah, this what, yeah. okay right. yeah okay <laughs> my name is avin and i am running a big data analytics company so, and uh, we are trying to build a platform for uh, investors so that they come to know about the big data analytics on startups so my question to all of you is what are the three important things which you are looking at from a startup before you invest in them so yeah. manav has done lot of investment problem <laughs> manav can you take that first yes, what are you yes, looking sure. for if he is looking for investment from you what are the three things you are looking for i and think when would you invest it's not just investment looking at the team i think team is most important i think because you go through lot of ups and downs during the business so i think what is the passion what is the perseverance and how committed are you to the business i think that is so team is number one criteria number two is which space are you in is a is there a value that you can deliver to the customer you know how you going to deliver that value sometimes you may not be clear i think that's where the passion really you know takes you through you can pivot the business but i think the area that you're largely targeting is is extremely extremely important you know and how you going to do things for a period of time and third is ability to build a team i think as you grow i think how to build a team and how to get people together even customer is also like that you know to go and convince your first customer you need need that conviction so i think team i would say almost more than 50% actually invested which i think uh, it's very well put there is nothing better than uh, early days you're going to bet on the driver not the bus and not the destination because if something goes on the way it's the driver or the bus who can take it and navigate through something else so truly speaking the entrepreneur and his core team by the way this is another interesting twist that uh, when you meet 
teams which are co co founder sorts you want to see the chemistry among them and a kind of comfort they have with each other and so on most of the time it ends up becoming a little bit of chaos later on if it is successful or not either ways so entrepreneur his team and very much his capability of the domain that he's talking about and how flexible are they when the way doesn't go correctly will they maneuver themselves to the correct direction or not and the second part that i'm talking is the flexibility of the business understanding and finding out that we were choosing a and we are not going to go towards a we're going to go towards b this is somewhere not many of us capably are able to maneuver and i believe this is one of the limitations uh, that is looked at so well put entrepreneur his team and flexibility of the challenging scenarios how they take it yeah so um uh, the um i think mean, obviously the team is important i'm not, i'm going to add couple of other points which is uh, uh, in my mind which is not been mentioned one really see in india the exits in india are extremely difficult and rare uh, exits for acquisition for talent acquisition for ip rarely happen in india and for an angel investor for a early stage investor the biggest problem is that he will not be able to get his money out right it's not even that the company will not succeed because the moment we put money we have actually written off the money because the risk is so 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 high of success or of failure the risk of failure is so high that we have written it off but what we want to see is the ability to get it out so is it large scalable business that you will be able to get a exit from okay right not not, not the quantum of exit it doesn't matter exit if it happens it will be great if it doesn't 95% plus exit will not happen it will die the money will go so i think that is singularly large stuff and two it will also depend on stage if it's very early stage team is very important because whatever bs they will feed you about the business plan the spreadsheets and all that none of you they don't believe it you don't believe it so it depends on the team the ability to be able to find if it's later stage slightly later stage then the most important thing i look for is what is the critical thing required for that business to succeed and do they have that particular critical factor all the businesses requires certain things which is a secret sauce with which you need to make it fly is that flight take off is that available in that particular team if it's a later stage if it's early stage is the team going to have to figure that out okay right those are two yeah hi my question is to murga well uh, myself vishwanath i mean the party space booking exactly speaking a uh, banquet hall booking for weddings and other such uh, parties uh, we have actually run a prototype for past two months in two three months in delhi thing is uh, the market is totally unorganized and we are totally struck in uh, I mean, building a court with the I mean, various venue operators thing is like i would like to connect with how you bharat metro when you like when you started it was totally unorganized market how you brought them on to your online segment and then how you captured it how you made the unorganized segment in a much more organized manner I wanted to have much more insights into it. See, when we started, it's a different story. We are talking about uh, 13 years ago in 2000. So that point of time, internet was very nascent. <laughs> yeah, dial up, and also the lot of internet company exited in India in 2000 thanks to the dot com bubble that had happened. So it was interest to kind of we didn't have so much of money. I think that helped us to kind of tie up with all the bigger portal like Reed, if you must, and Sifi. All those sites is a channel partner. We got a lot of traffic. Again, as I talked about, business model always been that you have to pay money to get the contact the people. So it's, it's completely, you know, it's kind of over a period of time, one by one, you know, we build the business again. A lot of product innovations happen. So it's not the scenario today. Today we can't uh, build the way what I would have built Bharat Mahathir money because today the capital is available. And second things about uh, today we can do SEO, SEM. Those things was pretty much very, very nascent stage. Now we have to look at which market we want to go after. We have to look at the cost-effective internal marketing, be it SEO, SEM, probably some other kind of marketing, and probably raise money. And uh, that's what we have to. So it's what it was when we built is different than what is today. Complete change. In fact, today we have to start the business and build differently than we would have done it in all those things. Because for us, that part of do small, small things to build the audience and communicate the business model to the people to make them the acceptance. So it took almost six, seven years for us to reach the scale of what we reached in 2006. Now we can similar scale can reach in one year time. So, yeah. yeah. I, I'll just extend this answer, which is what you wanted. So there is only one thing that. any b2b supplier who is not organized wants more business so you have to solve his customer side of problem if only he has a problem so most of the time banquet will have unfilled inventory you to say what if if i offer you and then you this is actually you should talk to farinder sama of redbus this is a nearly peer of that story now 
you would even do the proxy of on them being online. For example, like you're going to set a call center which will call them that there is a booking, would you want to take it and not? And then you will offer your consumer base that. Now the question is in this ecosystem you have a consumer which have to be built and then the supply that has to be built. Answer to the puzzle is that you have to build the consumer base first even if those guys are not coming online. Once you will bring customers, they will agree to come online. Hi, my name is Dilip. Uh, I don't know if you guys have done t uh, pivoting, but just a generic question in your experience, if someone decides to do a pivoting, what are the t uh, top two or three generic uh, checklist points which uh, a company or a founder has to do inside his company before the pivoting transformation starts? Okay. So the question is, uh, the question is, they want to pivot. What are the two, three things that you would want to check as an entrepreneur if you want to pivot? Or what are the two, three things that you would want to check if you're going to advise the entrepreneur to pivot? Vijay, do you want to take it first? Yeah, it's very interesting and I think uh, you, Can you guys hear okay? every one of us has ended up building companies which oh, after three or four years always have to relearn the business model and something else. I have uh, one theory about all companies and this is I probably tweeted about on Microsoft also and this is what I'm going to say is the first check. Are you going to be relevant tomorrow and day after by doing what you're doing? If you believe this is a dead end or a declining and not something which is going to grow or you will not grow because of the market scenario, this is truly the time to find something else. It, may, it might be because of market condition, it might be because of your own situation, either which. Being relevant is the first reason of companies to exist, whether profitable, not profitable and traction is the best measure of it. One is that. Second is if you decide that you are going to find out something else to be done, then it's a rule of thumb that as an entrepreneur, this is, a, this is the innovative dilemma movement, whether you will continue doing what you were doing, which might have some benefits still pending, or will you do new thing? You know the answer is, you have to do both things so that you can sustain your legs on that and then you can build something new. And that pivot point or the point of joining is in your mind as an entrepreneur and you will have a separate team doing it. The same team doesn't move here, this different team comes here and Incidentally, you will have to push the current one till the time that it is going to give the ultimate juice. Being relevant, two things together, no single thing. Yeah, so very well put from uh, being relevant. I think I would delve into more operational aspect. I think the question is that why do you want to pivot at first place? I think it would be various reasons. Your business model at first place is not working, your product has not worked, or market is not there. I think depending on the reason you have to really decide. And the dilemma that you get into is that often you run out of cash. I think that is the key, key part to pivot. You know, if you don't conserve cash early on in your life and you're not able to build the business which can, you can sustain on your own, there's no option to pivot anymore because people won't give you capital. You know, VCs will write it off, you know, say you have failed and no more capital available to you and angels won't look at you. So I think that's a challenge you should avoid at all costs. You know, you should have enough capital and you should decide early on whether I want to pivot based on uh, that's input I will give. I think so capital conservation is extremely important to even have a chance to pivot. Anish, do you have an alternative opinion? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I mean, people talk uh, uh, passion versus pivoting. Okay, right? There's a lot of uh, very little passion, too much of pivoting, and the other and the other way around. I think fundamental uh, fun, uh, my fundamental uh, thesis is look at always reverse engineer. Okay, right? So you have done something. You are at a stage. You are thinking continue pivot. Look at look at look at what is your what do you want in next two years, three years time and reverse engineer from there. Okay. If you are looking to build a type of company which will get valued at something and for that you need to get VC money, then your thing is very simple. You need to pivot to a model that is flavor of the day that the VC will fund you today. Okay. Everything else doesn't matter. I actually, I, 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 wants to say something I, I, opposite. I, 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 yeah, yeah, no, no, very good. No, no, I, I'm, I'm a very good. That's why I purposely have to take it. <laughs> yeah, 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 putting the, putting the time. So, so, okay, that, that may not be the reason. Now, you, you, if you have found your model has not worked, you are now suddenly, because of all that you have done, you have discovered a new business idea, a new variation of the business idea, a new business model, instead of B2C, go B2B and do that stuff, or continuous model, then by all means go there. Okay, right? Depends on what you, what you are what you are reverse engineering towards. Trying to go with the existing model if it's if you are not if you are not feeling confident if you don't think it's going to work beyond a particular point, okay, is waste of your time. Entrepreneur time is the maximum opportunity cost comes out of the entrepreneur time. 
so that's 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 my sense manav uh, manav wants to go yeah <laughs> people who violently disagree yeah, yeah. No, so <laughs> yeah, he's got a mic he's got a mic so in general yeah. i disagree about you know going after a flavor i'll give you a story when i started in 2000 2004 asp which is cloud now was a big story people said start asp business and get funded and you know enterprise business is dead you can't get global company of india you can't do large sales sitting here in india you know there were companies finical and all those were successful back then or iflex they have sold mostly in you know city to city bank you know i said to hell with it you know i am going to sell to larger companies we went down and we sold to largest companies in the world build global sales team i think if and we got funding from the best of the world now we got silver lake so i think the key point is go after value and in, and if you can generate enough cash up front to sustain yourself i think there are enough opportunities in your lifetime as as a businessman or entrepreneur where you can pivot so i would suggest don't go after flavors today cloud is a season who knows today enterprises sell you know 90% of the business on enterprise comes still from license you know only 10% cloud yes a lot of promise 5 10 years on the line but things may suddenly change who knows so i think i would say focus on living value and if people pay for that value well if somebody offers me 2 million dollars license in the in the first year i will take it i will say fine i will take that and utilize that capital to build even further i don't have to dilute myself i don't have to go to vc i can just focus on building the business so i think that's what i would suggest Hello. you wanted to have something yeah. different Yeah, I think the people might. I don't know whether it's working or not, but this this works. I think the what the Vijay put in, you know, it's about the driver. So in fact, when I started the business, uh, two and a half years I didn't have the business model. So it took two and a half years, maybe I didn't define when I'm running a community site without even business model. That's out of my, you know, for a part time and weekends. It took two and a half years, but I didn't even approach in the matrimony space. So once I didn't approach the matrimony space, in 2006 we ventured a lot of other businesses, jobs, automobile, so many things. And you realize that so much can be done within the the matrimony space so what matters is that your ability to kind of sustain and grow as you progress things may emerge new ideas will emerge new things may emerge not nothing but the driver matters whether you can take a you no know, kind of detour or many things i think bus may change anything only the driver passion the commitment what really again it took after some you can find it, it took after two and a half years i sense i can no point running the community website let me identify the, 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 some other things matrimony was the idea which is kind of which it upon so that's that's what matters Yes, yeah, my name is Jitendra. So far, most of the companies in India have tried to replicate the model of the Western, you know, mm-hmm. world, and uh, been successful so far with the 150 million internet users in mostly metro cities. As the internet penetration goes to B tier and C tier cities, and looking at like 500 million in the next seven year, what do you think the current companies have to do to scale? We have the demographics very different in okay. cities. Good question. Why don't we start yeah. with uh, VSS? Yeah, yeah. Ghana okay. is the right person because uh, yeah. all these our companies are targeting Indian audience. I think total we have successfully able to target. What is the question? So the question is know, building a the next few years, mm. next seven years, ten years from the 150 million users that we have, we're going to go add hundreds and more, many more millions of users. What do the companies right now that are going after these 150 million have to do to scale to 350 million, to scale to 500 million users that might come about through the mobile phone or any other means? In a few years from now, they don't have credit card. A lot of things, right? Yeah. No, What do you have so to do to change? Yeah. So no, you are talking primarily about India. I'll let uh, uh, the people. Can we pass the mic back and forth? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, mobile is a big thing. Uh, let me share our perspective. Uh, what's happening is, you know, initially now that uh, internet is large in entire one entire two cities. Now that as you progress, and uh, Vijay can definitely add flavor to it. The every device is going to be smart device in terms of the people carrying the mobile phone. Internet, our speed is going to get better and better. We already see that you know mobile, in terms of user accessing that uh, this website through mobile is really scaling up rapidly. Month on month is really going up. So you need to have that mobile strategy as the primary one of the important strategy. And mobile, both app as well as web. So most of the things happening on the app compared to the web. Again, if you want to bring that uh, into region language also. So the way you look at initially the. internet population through tier one tier two then you also taken our business into the retail venture where we thought we could able to kind of get the people of you want to use the services they are not online condom consumer services through the retail venture so we have two hundred outlet across india now are looking at the mobile uh, both app and app that's very very important so you look at online penetration has to go and happen through that the mobile both app and app uh, that's really growing very well in our topic so mobile should be a, i wouldn't even say that it can be part of your Primary strategy to kind of scale the business to get more audience coming through the tire. Even tire on tire to tire. Also, even the people in tire on also. The people are kind of all the time through mobile. It's become the very handy thing. Plus, at a notification, all the thing gets you to kind of people to stay with that site all the time. So, do you want to add anything? Uh, I'll say that don't expect 
Google to remain the destination for your destination, which means Google's influence on customers to bring on your store will be less than 10%, unless Google reinvents something magical in between, and I'm meaning Google as a search, not necessarily Android as a Google product here. So all your customers will not come via Google search, etc. kind of things, because they will pop up a phone which will be a smart OS, so to say. And if I was to build for next five years, and I was chasing the fifth year, I won't bother about desktop browser at all, just zero traction, no, no attention to it, only focus on the smartphone platforms or platforms which have new touch screens. And local language, which is very known for as a limitation, and I run a company which includes feature phone as a business. In Delhi as a city, we have 85% people choosing Hindi as an option when we have English and Hindi as a given choice. So let's just remember it, it's not Taiwan, Tatu, or it's not even urban or rural. Uh, whenever given a chance, you listen to two Punjabis talking in Punjabi, not English actually, which is equivalent to say that local language, smartphone, everything else dumped. Uh, question, question for one, one second, uh, uh, so guys, we have only 10 minutes left, so we're going to go rapid fire. What that means is she's going to go pretty quickly to around the questions, and I'm going to ask you to address the question only to one person, and they have three sentences max to answer the question, only three sentences, okay? And your, and your question cannot be more than three, three sentences. Okay, okay, go for it. Uh, Ganesh, question for you. Uh, husband, wife, team, what's the plus, what's the minus? Three sentences. <laughs> three sentences, very difficult. Right? It's, uh, <coughs> and your daughter is here also. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think, uh, uh, no, husband, uh, but uh, if they have complementary skills and they bring different value to the table, there is less of a conflict. Therefore, in our, in our case, it has worked very well because uh, uh, we have different skills, so that's that's the uh, that's one. Uh, the challenge, uh, the, the the advantage is that the world, the employees, the VCs, investors, everybody knows you are all into this. It's not that you are here and your wife is in a multinational job earning nice money and all that stuff. So your commitment is unquestioned because the family is into this. Okay, right? Uh, two. Uh, the, 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 the the disadvantage is the work uh, work life balance really uh, merges completely. But which is, which is fine. I'm sure most of the entrepreneurs will agree. Uh, if you, whether you're a husband or wife, if you are an entrepreneur, it's 24-hour job. So in which case, it really doesn't matter. So three, I'll stop. I'll stop. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm a co-founder at an education uh, services company, and uh, we're introducing tablet-based education in schools. And uh, as an entrepreneur, I find it so difficult. I mean, you said about being empathetic to the uh, investor community and to the VC and the P. We got funded at the idea stage, but right now, how much of time do we divide as founders and co-founders between raising money, because we are in the process of raising money, and then towards our own businesses? So yes, you. you should know amount of runway that you have. If you have it for more than six months, work on the business. If you don't have it for more than six months, go, go for the funding round. Hi. I am, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just add to it. See, uh, in most of the times I have found one of the founders' job is continuously look at raising money. So, so there is no choice about it. There are exceptions uh, where you build businesses with large amount of money and uh, the cash generation. But I have rarely seen businesses where at least one of the founders' primary time is in raising money. Yeah. Hi, I'm Hiren. Uh, yeah, Entrepreneur is a very early stage uh, company. And we are still trying to kind of uh, tweak our business model to find the right kind of uh, 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 business strategy where we can actually hit the scale button. I uh, just wanted to understand from uh, your experience when you were still at an early stage at your own companies, when and what kind of a tweak or a hack which you kind of came across when you decided, okay, now is the time to actually hit the scale button. Uh, just real life examples in your own companies when this happened. So I have three things. So first I did was, you know, uh, Reach cash flow break even as soon as you can because then you can sustain your business. Number two, take big risk, you know, hire, you know, global sales team, product managers, again early on, give them bigger salaries or, or right amount of salaries, do that. And third thing is think big, you know, take, go out and, you know, sell your product out the world early on so you get your feedback from the product side and you can build into the product. These are three things. Community set. You want to figure out when and how to monetize. Three, three answers. Three 
again if there is compelling value proposition someone will pay for it and today is not even you know kind of money to be made if you have to build a large community the money can be eventually made again but india we have to see that kind of business model but it's been very uh, strong in the us you know pinterest or twitter many sites able to build a large community then the monetization happened later so the india context babu the people look at you know kind of is there any way to monetize it i think we have to identify uh, why would someone want to pay for certain services because they find that service is compelling whether service or content whatever could be known to you we have to identify a, what i am providing which people find it compelling people find it valuable By the way, I have a tip. Start making money today. That works. That's a simple one. Okay, check question. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Abhijit Dengoli. I'm a co-founder at a company called Lead and Rich. We are into marketing data management. Uh, my question is: uh, services around the product is that uh, good or bad in the in an enterprise software scenario? Yeah. No. If it can. no everything is good if it can uh, if it solves a need and you are able to raise money you are uh, you are able to get customers to pay uh, pay you money so the answer to that is uh, very straight forward if, if you are in a situation where you think by building services you will be able to uh, serve a need and make money please by all means do it okay right and then you can keep figuring out how to scale how to do all that yeah i i think uh, you have to decide one of the way other and you have to make one thing dead by that time period i used to do internet hosting business till the time i was finding my feet in telecom business one day i binary cut that because i figured out that now i have sustenance there two things are good but remember you have to decide the death point of the one whichever it is this question is for ganesh you had made a very interesting comment just now about how it's very important to raise money based on promise and less so on performance Can you speak a little bit of, in terms of practical advice for entrepreneurs? How, with someone who doesn't have a track record, how would they be able to do do something like that practically? A tip oh. question: Are you from Stanford by any chance, as of alumni? No. I am IT. Oh, sorry. You want to know? No, I'm I'm first time entrepreneur working on an e-commerce. No, it's, it's fine. I wanted to ask you something else. Are you Education, from Stanford, Wharton, IIT, I am? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Then you let's ask this. Yeah, question. Question. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, I think no. The the answer the answer to that is simple. If you are see, I, like, like I mentioned, the VCs are also in your. They have they have gone and raised money from the limited partners to be able to give them great returns, right? So if you are able to show how you are you are creating, you will create a large business. solve a deep rooted problem then people will give you money because they also are looking for great opportunities great entrepreneurs great business model to fund money they have raised the money so they have to deploy so single answer show them why they should invest in you and if they don't invest in you they are going to really feel bad and like a fool okay right because you are going to create a company uh, which is going to make them shit loads of money part of my french and they would look foolish Uh, in the eyes of the community if they don't fund you you need to be able to show, you need to be able to show that if you show that they will fund you it really doesn't matter it's a very high risk game they are taking the fact that you have 100 transaction 1000 transaction to show while they will keep asking you for traction it gives them no solace they are betting on you and your model and your sector so you manav you have something to say i think other way is that show promise to people who believe in you show promise to family friends it needs to be 100k or 200k from the people that you know around you know 10 10 lakh from 10 people i think then that 200k then you can show some traction and you can raise large capital that's another way i think show promise to people who believe in you because people are ultimately you know riding behind you you are the horse here okay one last thing i want to get uh, one parting word of how to scale from each and every one of you uh, who wants to go first murugu do you want to start first how do you scale i've got a 10 crore business i've got a 20 crore business i want to be like murugu I uh, want to be a thousand fifty million crore business. No, I talked about in two thousand six. We thought uh, grow means we got to go outside of our core domain. That's why it went beyond matrimony into various other verticals. The thinking was go external, not so many verticals. They realized that it's launching business very easy. Scaling up of every business requires a capital, focus, team, team and management, many other things. Then they realized that so much opportunity possible within the core category. That's what happened. The growth can possible in the core category. But you have to innovate today. Within matrimony, what it was just a Bharat matrimony or come online. Today, within matrimony space, we are running nine businesses. So we created so many of horizontal vertical segmented based business model, elite matrimony, assisted, community matrimony, retail outlets, 
then there's a popular matrimony, then forward looking of matchmaking services, Tambulia, return gifts venture, matrimony gifts. He has so much can do in the core category. So you can look inward to grow the business. Got it. That's okay. That's Ganesh, where you look at that. Yeah. Want a piece of advice? Yeah. So I, I think scale will come if you are uh, addressing a deep rooted problem which everybody needs. What I mean by that is if you are wanting to swell, sell jewelry online to dogs, to dog owners, okay, right? Now that's I'm buying, that, I'm buying. Okay, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Market of one. Yeah, yeah, okay, right? So that will be a small business. To scale that business, how many dog owners are there? How many of them will buy online? How many of them will buy jewelry for their dog online in India? And how many of those you will be able to reach very small? On the other hand, take, take, take large problem. I mean, just an example, education, everybody needs education. My latest venture is in home healthcare. Healthcare, all of us will get old, will get sick, will, will need diagnostics, will do that. It's a large problem. Or big basket where we deliver grocery at home. So, if you are able to address a large problem, one. Two is, you need to be really valuable and relevant. I think it was made earlier. Relevant to the customer. If your company were to shut down, okay, who will cry? Important question I ask. Obviously, you will cry, your investors will cry, <laughs> and employees will, go, employees will cry. But who should cry? The consumer should cry. It happens today in Big Basket. For Band or something like that, we shut down for one day. For inventory stock taking, we shut down for one day. On our Facebook, we get so many abuses. Oh my God. Okay, right? Why are you shutting down? Can't you do something? Can't you do this? In this time, why do you want to do That is really will scale. Automatically, it will scale. Good. Ganesh, uh, Manav, I think uh, in addition to the points we already made, I think Think big. Think big early on. I think, you know, word is your scale these days, you know, so think big, take bigger risk and I think give opportunity yourself to fail. I think you should don't be afraid of failures. And I think focus on business, don't follow VCs. That's what I would say, you know, focus on building real value. These are the top four points. Vijay? I think that scale comes from my theory of three things. One is the business that you are in, which means that with geography, so in which business segment and your business line item that you are addressing, which is the size of the addressable market that we are talking. So address a correctly sized market, preferably multi-billion dollars, couple of hundred billion dollars so that you can touch one or two of this. And second will be the team. If you aren't able to build a team which can run all of your business without you being there, then you are not being going to be scaling ever. This is point number two. And third is resources. For billion dollar businesses, you need sizable resources which are including our money and other kind of relationships and infrastructure. Just make sure that you were not blinded by their needs or not. So three things at different point of time, different movements, but needed. That. Perfect. Thank you guys very, very much. Thank the, the panelists as well. Ganesh, Murugu, Manav and uh, VSS. All of these guys will be available. So I, if